to today's edition of SCM Live. I'm Keith Martin, the publisher of Sports Car Market Magazine, and this is a showcase edition. We're going to be talking to a collector, Harry Clark, about his new online auction business, Classic Promenade, and looking at three of the cars that he will be offering. A 1928 Rolls-Royce Phantom One Ascot Tour, a 1954 Bentley R-Type Continental, and a 1956 Mercedes-Benz 300 SC Coupe. Harry, you and I have known each other for a long time, especially at La Jolla, where I've been the MC and I've watched you gather up all those CCA classics. Tell us something about your background in the hobby. Well, yeah, um, Keith, I, uh, I uh, really started my uh, interest in the hobby at 11 years old. I used to uh, literally study Hemmings Motor News uh, every month, cover to cover. Uh, by 15, uh, I bought my first collector car uh, and actually uh, exhibited it at my first Concours event at 15 years old. Um, so I, I'm, I'm a lifelong collector, uh, spent 25 years as an active CEO, and um, it was actually my mother that said, hey, Harry, why don't, you, um, why don't you do what you love for a living and uh, uh, open up a collector car dealership because Warren Buffett says, if you do, do what you love for a living, you never work a day in your life. And so I, I did so in uh, 2008. So Harry, you started a couple of uh, very large companies and you've written a book called, was it The Mistakes That Millionaires Make? Exactly, yes. And I've, I've uh, spoken in uh, 25 countries, 75 cities uh, to CEOs all over the world. So tell us about Classic Promenade. It's an online auction company. What caused you at this time to jump into this field? Well, so um, understand that uh, we're, we're, we may be the only um, online auction company that has its roots as a collector card dealership. Um, and our philosophy as a dealership from day one has been to uh, make it the ideal experience for both buyers and sellers. Um, a, a lot of a lot of dealerships and auction companies they they represent the seller. Um, for us, we represent the buyer and seller equally. Again, trying to make it the ideal experience. That's because I've been a lifelong collector myself, and and uh, so I, I really want to make it an excellent experience. What um, what we found our philosophy at Classic Promenade has been to emphasize transparency. And so what I mean by that, because a lot of people use that, that nomenclature uh, in different ways. What, what we do at Classic Promenade is we talk about the, the strengths of a car and also the, the areas of improvement for a car. These are going to be online or vir virtual only events. You're not going to have a packed showroom with people standing there and raising bidding paddles. Absolutely. Very, model very similar uh, to bring a trailer in that regard. So it'll be a continuous starting off with about 12 cars a week. Um, it'll be a continuous entree of new cars each and every week. Uh, so it's not an event. It's an it's a online event. Um, auction platform. But imagine every single car will have an independent third-party inspection with 158 points checked. You know, Bring a Trailer uh, is known for having a true hands-off approach. They kind of list the car and then they rely on their user community to make all the comments. So you're doing something very different. Your approach is very hands-on. Yeah, so we, we Yes, and, and again, that I, th I think it has to do with two things. One, um, you know, being a, a very high level collector for a long, long time uh, within the hobby. But, you know, um, number two, as a dealer, we're used to being hands on. And, and w you know, we understand that if the expectations of the buyer aren't managed, that it, it makes for a very unpleasant experience. So we, we just really do everything we can to make sure that we're managing the expectations of, of the buyer by really accurately describing what it is they're buying. Let's go to our first car, Harry. It's a 1954 Bentley R-Type Continental. Tell us something about this car. Sure, um, it's, uh, it's a car that really has been out of view for about 30 years. 
Uh, so it has a you know a very well documented history from new. Um, it it actually it, uh, there were two um, uh, Indian royal royal family members that that originally had it um, in England, um, and then it made its way um, uh, early on uh, in the uh, uh, early 60s um, over to the US. Um, and it, again, it pretty much has been uh, hidden away in the West uh, for, for you know, the last uh, several decades. So that even though it's been hidden away, is it mechanically fully fettled? Is it up to snuff now? Um, it's it's actually uh, uh, getting the major service work done. Oh yeah, no, it's it it runs and drives, but w you know it's literally being vetted right now. The major service is being done. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, an incredible detailing process is is being done as well. Uh, but it's it's striking. It's an H. J. Moliner. You know, the the uh, R type Continentals are just about, you know, the perfect piece of, of uh, modern art or sculpture. Why do you think the archives have this enduring appeal and attraction? What sets them apart? Well, so when they were first introduced, uh, the, the uh, motor uh, media just went nuts because here's a car that was guaranteed to exceed 100 miles per hour with four people. Um, averaging, it, it could get 20 miles per gallon. So this was a car that, that you literally could just bomb through uh, the, the European continent um, in, in extreme luxury, but super high performance for the time. So you say you have, what, a 148-point checklist? 158-point, yes. 158. Yeah. So what kinds of things do you go over? And then do you provide that list to a potential buyer? Absolutely. Every, every single car will have a published right on our website. So, you know, they can, they can download it, they can open it up. Um, and it's, it's uh, well, with 158 points, you can imagine it's extensive, but does the heater work? Uh, does, does the clock work? Um, are there scratches dense? The chrome, the stainless, um, uh, is there any rust, um, uh, oil leaks, uh, you know, 158 points. And this car, do you think it is, well, how would you grade this car on a scale of one to five? If one is Pebble Beach winning and five is one you wouldn't want to own, where does this car fall? So um, this, in terms of, of rating it, um, it's uh, legitimately probably on its face a number three, in terms of valuation, um, it really is going to be a number two. Um, and the reason for that is the valuations are adjusted for history, authenticity, or originality. So for example, the interior of this car is all original and it's, it's magnificent. Tell us about valuation. Where do these cars, where have they been selling in the market? So um, on, on the very low end, um, you know, around 600,000, uh, on the high end, um, about 1.8 million. Um, we, uh, the, our estimate on this car is 1.2 to 1.5 million. Thank you very much. Before we go on to the next car, I'm going to here we do a shameless plug for my magazine, Sports Car Market here. Uh, for you watching on YouTube, be sure to like this channel, the Sports Car Market channel, and subscribe to it, and you'll never miss another episode of SCM Live. To subscribe to SCM, we have a special offer that is the best price you're going to get. It's You go to sportscarmarket.com slash Zoom. A 25% discount, you get SCM and all our supplements and the digital edition for less than $5 a month. Harry, the next car, you've got a 1956 Mercedes 300SC Coupe. Yes, um, so it's one of 98 made originally. This is really, it really represents some of the last truly hand-built Mercedes-Benz ever. Um, they're, they're just um, beautiful cars, again, very sculpted, um, and the level of craftsmanship is just spectacular. Again, you, you know, similar to the Bentley, you have this 
you know, beautiful leather uh, interior with wood accents, chrome everywhere. Um, actually, uh, a bit of trivia, the, the 300, that series has the largest Mercedes um, uh, hood ornament that uh, Mercedes ever offered. It's uh, uh, perfectly scaled to the car, however. So Harry, what, tell us the history of this car and explain how you choose the cars that you're going to represent at Classic Promenade. Yes, thank you. Um, yes, uh, this car also has a great history. It was uh, bought new by uh, Mr. J. Lewis, U.S. delivery. This was not a U European delivery car that was brought here. Um, early on, it was owned by one of the world experts, Chuck Brahms. Um, and uh, in California, the car has been in California for uh, at least 50 years. Uh, it, was, it was known in the 70s uh, in, in Southern California. Uh, one family, of, you know, a very, very uh, significant family in Mexico uh, owned the car for 30 years. Um, and they, they had SB Coachworks in Southern California uh, commence a complete nut and bolt restoration of a very nice original car. Um, and that was completed uh, last year. And the, we actually uh, uh, represented the car uh, to uh, its present owner who, that, who bought it basically to rally the car. Uh, so he had Dr. Jag uh, Technologies in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Uh, go through and and mechanically make the car amazing. So this car is is ready for you know whatever rally or concours event. So it's just about a hundred point car, probably like a ninety nine point car. You say this gentleman went through and made the car amazing. Did he upgrade the car or just make what was there as good as it could be? Uh, yes. Yeah. So it's all the fine. Um, often when cars are restored, there's the last 1%, especially if, if a car is a trailer queen, generally they're not great driving cars until, they're, until the owner invests in making it a great tour car or rally car. That's what this gentleman did. So it's the, making sure the fuel systems operate and you know, if, if you're climbing mountains, making sure you know, the car uh, temperature maintains itself well. Um, and just, you know, again, all the dialing it in, not just for show, but for, you know, so that it's a dependable, exciting rally car. Let's talk about the market for these cars. What have they been selling for? What's the range? So um, for a number three car, they're, they're right around, you know, high 300s, 400,000. Um, and, uh, you know, we, the, our uh, pre-sale estimate on this, this is in the auction, uh, is 450 to 550. I'm going to ask you a question. We've talked about two cars that have a lot in common. They're from almost the same year. They're high-speed touring cars. It is a different buyer for the Bentley than it is for the Mercedes? No. Well, there's a lot of commonality, actually, right? I mean, they are high-performance, sexy coupes. Um, I, the, obviously, the Mercedes is Teutonic. Right, is you know it's it, uh, whereas the Bentley, um, you know, is rather sleek. Um, from what I've, from my experience, there the buyer could be the same buyer for really, truly for both cars. I mean, you figure it's gonna it's gonna be somebody that um, appreciates design, engineering, and performance. And that's, that's likely the buyer for, for both of the cars. The question is, is, it, is the Mercedes gonna go to a home that has you know, 50 Mercedes Benz and no British cars? Um, or, right, or is it going to a Swiss buyer that has both uh, Bentley, Rolls and, and uh, Mercedes?
So, Harry, before we get on to the star car of today's uh, Spotlight show, uh, once again, you're watching this on YouTube. Take a second to like the Sports Car Market channel and subscribe to it, and that way you'll be notified every time a new episode comes up. And also, while you're on the web, why don't you subscribe to Sports Car Market? Sportscarmarket.com slash Zoom gets you the best deal we've ever offered, less than five bucks a month. We have almost 200 pages every month, plus all our supplements. You can pass that link along to your friends and never miss another issue. Now, Harry, this next car is a very special car. Tell us something about it. Yeah, so it's a 1928 Rolls-Royce Springfield Phantom One with a uh, Ascot uh, touring body. Um, it's uh, one of 28 Ascots uh, that were ever made. Um, the, this particular car has uh, the dual cowl, which um, when we go over to the car, we'll, I'll, I'll explain what a dual cowl is, uh, just to make that clear. Um, but the importance of this car is that it was uh, restored for the uh, 1974 wildly successful movie, The Great Gatsby, starring Robert Redford and Mia Farrow. Uh, this car, I mean, if, just think of uh, the society at the time. This car was on the, the cover of Newsweek, GQ. It was in Motor Trend. It was, it was featured um, all, all, you know, all over the place uh, back in the day. I mean, how often is, is a vehicle that's used in a movie uh, on the on the cover of such uh, significant publications doesn't. So what's happen. the provenance of the car? It was used in the movie. What happened to it after that? Well, so the the gentleman that um, that acquired it in 1973, his name was uh, Ted Leonard. Uh, he lived in uh, Seacock, uh, Massachusetts. The movie was filmed in Newport, Rhode Island, which is nearby. So. Uh, Mr. Leonard provided the car for the movie, and then he, he kept it for the next 35 years. He, he had it for 36 years until he, until he passed. Then at that time in 2009, it was auctioned off at, at uh, Bonhams. Um, and uh, if you remember uh, the, the late uh, John O'Quinn, uh, he, he purchased the car. Three months later, he passed. So if you remember, he had the accident. Let me ask you a, a tough question here, okay? You, you ready? Yes. Okay. You said this car was restored for the movie. Now, cars restored to a movie standard don't necessarily have the best reputation. Absolutely what right. What happened to the car and what's its restoration level now? Yes. So um, you're absolutely right. It was basically a quickie, you know, let, because... Uh, in in uh, F. Scott Fitzgerald's book, uh, the car was very, very well described as this, you know, very, um, uh, you know, very rich, creamy yellow uh, exterior, tons of chrome, tons of glass, and green leather uh, interior. So, um, the, you can imagine the car was not in that, uh, that livery at the time. It was uh, two-tone uh, uh, tan and brown. Uh, so they did a quick, uh, quick restoration. Um, and then uh, after, after the present owner uh, acquired the car, he commenced a full restoration, a, a Concorde quality restoration uh, the total investment, into, including acquiring the car, has been $1.2 million. However, Harry, when he did that restoration, that restoration was not done back to the original color scheme of the car. Why do you think the owner made that choice? Well, for very good reason. Uh, it would be analogous to the bullet Mustang if you painted it anything other <laughs> right, yeah. than the green. So basically, this, this is the Gatsby Rolls, right? So it, um, it's, that takes precedence over, over you know, the original uh, configuration of the car. Um, so it's, it's restored right back to, uh, you know, uh, to the, the Gatsby era. 
And so, so some people might say when you're restoring a car, you pick the moment in time that the car has the most historical significance. Okay, which, I like what, that. What's been done here. Oh, yes, uh, absolutely. I mean, again, this, this car is, uh, you know, again, the bullet Mustang, there were two. Uh, this, there's only one. And the intrinsic value of this car, if it, if it had no movie uh, provenance at all, um, is, is still, you know, uh, what, Five hundred, six hundred thousand dollars, just ba you know, as a as a base car. Why don't you take us over to the car here? Let's take a look at it. What's, Absolutely. Let, what's the first thing you want to show us here on this car? Well, <clears throat> first of all, the entirety of a car. Uh, just look at how absolutely stunning it is. Again, uh, similar to uh, the novel, right? All of the abundance of chrome, the uh, Dual windshields, the you know the the uh, side uh, side uh, windows. Um, so if you and and the kind of buttery yellow, uh, you know, cream yellow color, um, uh, and the green leather interior. So just the uh, the overall uh, uh, kind of magnificence of this car is, I, I think, is is truly stunning. I can tell you that when people see this, they, their, their jaw drops. You said this was a dual cowl phaeton. Will you translate that into English for me? Yes. Yeah, so um, uh, on a car, this section between the windshield and, and you know, the hood, that's a cowl, okay? Um, and there, in this era, most of these, most of, of the phaeton, Okay, and I can explain that uh, too. But most of the phantoms would just have a, a second windshield that's that's more or less vertical that's mounted right here. And for this particular car, it's a dual cowl, which means that it has this separate cowl here, which um, let's say in uh, cold weather, right? If you're a rear seat passenger, it's going to help protect uh, to keep you warmer. Um, and, and, uh, and by the way, so a Phaeton is a four-door convertible with no roll-up windows. Otherwise, that would be a convertible sedan. A Phaeton uh, is, you know, basically would have side curtains that you can install, but no roll-up windows. So but this is... This is a dual cowl fan. Let's talk about weather protection. When you have your side curtains in and your top up, are you actually able to A, keep the rain out, and B, does the heater work well enough to have some warmth to your feet? Well, uh, and, and how about C, does it fog up, <laughs> right? So um, it they're they're um, close to being weather tight. Um, often you you know from the from the top of the windshield you get uh, you know occasional drips, but for, you know they're largely weather tight. Uh, but it does get kind of steamy um, if if you have a couple people uh, in it. Uh, that's that's for sure. So show us the interior of the car. So again, if you if you notice this, uh, you know, very very striking uh, green leather uh, that is you know top quality. Uh, the the wood dash again, abundance of chrome being used for um, all the instrumentation. Um, it's you know really rather stunning. Um, this this car when it was mechanically restored by one of the top. Uh, uh, restorers of uh, Silver Ghosts and Phantoms, early Phantoms. Uh, they installed a gear vendor overdrive. So it has some modern switches over there and it has uh, also uh, turn si signal indicators, you know, little, you know, a few modern touches to make it so you can comfortably uh, uh, motor down the road at 65. You could probably go 70, but you wouldn't probably want to do it all day long. So Harry, but isn't that go, stunning? When you go through your checklist, do you check that every single instrument functions properly, that all the little lights behind the dials come up and light up well? Yes, we do, as a matter of fact. Um, we also 
uh, uh, generally do about a four mile test drive. Um, and uh, the, the experience of the test drive is also noted, uh, not just with a checkbox, but also some commentary. And so is this the original color of the interior? Uh, no, this, this was specified by uh, F. Scott Fitz Fitzgerald okay. in the book. So uh, it, think of it as a, a special order by Mr. Gadsby himself. So how do you, show me how you get into the back seat there. Uh, yes, okay. So uh, th this uh, takes a little bit of, of doing. So the, the first step is um, you fold the windshield down, okay? The second is the latches. Uh, there's the latch there. Okay, thank you. And then, so now you would put the cowl up and jump in and voila. Huh. And then do you lower the cowl while you're sitting there? Yes, yeah. So then it's windshield up and James, uh, take me to the Circle K. So, Harry, what's it like to drive one of these cars? I mean, they're, they're big cars. They're heavy cars. Uh, what's, what's it like going down the road? I'm so glad you asked. I love driving cars of this vintage. And I know, I know Keith, it's not quite your cup of tea, but I, I love it. I've done many 1,500-mile tours in 28 Packards, uh, 1930 Packards, et cetera. So the reason I love it is it's a full body experience. I mean, you are not texting, you're not sipping a, you know, your latte <laughs> while you're driving. I mean, if you, if you look at the steering wheel, the, just the instrumentation that's on the steering wheel um, or just the starting procedure. I mean, the, you know, these are, these are um, complicated, which is why the affluent people had chauffeurs, because uh, these are not for the faint of heart. One of the reasons people engage with classic cars is to achieve a sense of mastery. So to, to, I would think that when you are piloting this car, with a high grade of precision, you have a lot of personal satisfaction that you have the skill set necessary to make this car behave. That, you know, that's a good point. I, and I, I've actually never articulated that, but I, I absolutely agree. Yeah, that you're right. Absolutely. Yeah. So let's say, what would it, what's it going to cost someone to be able to sit where you're sitting? <laughs> yes. Um, so our um, our pre-sale estimate on this car is one point five to two million dollars, um, and I can tell you that we've already had um, we've already had people even after publishing that that are trying to acquire it uh, before the auction. So but once you have a car listed for an auction, you're not going to sell it before the auction. You're exactly right. Yeah, where that's uh, and and Keith, I have to I have to tell you that my my uh, inner uh, collector car dealer has a problem with that. You can imagine, right? <laughs> you know, somebody saying, you know, what would it take to buy it now? <laughs> when 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 does Classic Promenade uh, open its virtual doors and start having the first bids come in? Yes, so um, the the end of the first week of of, of September uh, will be our first uh, series of uh, uh, of auctions, uh, and again we're we're uh, we'll be running about twelve a week, um, and the Gatsby uh, is, will be up on uh, commencing October twelfth for two weeks. And so if people want to follow your auction, to sign up for notifications, they go to classicpromenade.com. Exactly, yes. And, and we, have, uh, we have an auction uh, tab now where, where they can uh, sign up if, if they have a car. That you can imagine we're getting quite a few inquiries from people that have uh, fine motor cars. 
um, you can you can let us know about that. We can enter a, a dialogue into it. And uh, uh, yes, yeah. So Perry, join, I, join the community. You. You've already founded a couple of very successful businesses. Now you're on to a third business here. You're coming along, I think, with the right product at the right time. You know, there are no big land auctions. And what people are looking for is a sense of assurance. And it, it, your whole company and approach is to let people feel comfortable that when the car that they bid on and they win arrives in their driveway, it will be exactly as they expected or even more. This has been a special edition of SCM Live, a showcase edition. You're watching it on a YouTube channel. Take a moment to like this channel and subscribe. You'll never miss another one. Subscribe to Sports Car Market, sportscarmarket.com slash Zoom, less than $5 a month for Sports Car Market. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you, Harry, for being such a fabulous guest and for sharing so much information with us. You bet. Thank you, Keith.